All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am extremely excited about this next guest, former teammate of mine, a guy that we saw come from practice squad to now being the starter, you know, for going on two years now with the Pittsburgh Steelers out of Bloomsburg University. You love to see it. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, your starting left guard of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Matt Filer. Matt, what's good, baby? How are you? Not too bad. How about yourself? Man, I'm doing well, man. You know, just enjoying seeing how your career has progressed thus far, man. Just big fan of you, man. Loving what you're doing, man. Just being able to show your versatility along that offensive line, man. So, you know, just keep doing what you're doing, baby. All right. I appreciate it. Yes, indeed. And, you know, speaking of what you've been able to do so far along this offensive line, man, this year you made the transition from uh, starting at right tackle last year and the year prior to that to starting full time at left guard. So just talk about, man, how, how that transition has been for you thus far. Um, you know, it's been a little weird going from the right side on the edge to, to the left side on the interior. But, uh, you know, I've played there before in the preseasons and, and in the past. So, um, you know, once I got a couple snaps under my belt, it started coming back to me and, and things started coming a little bit easier. I like it. Now, do you have a preference between, you know, right tackle or left guard or anything? Um, not really. I mean, I liked right tackle when I was playing there and now I like left guard. <laughs> now I'm playing there. I <laughs> can I, dig it. But yeah, I, don't, I mean... I don't really have a preference. I like it, man. When you versatile like you, it don't matter. Line it up, man. You getting the shut down. Right. <laughs> now, Matt, was there a was there a time through your NFL career up to this point where you thought, "Wow, I you know I kind of made it," you know, through through all of this? Was there something that I don't know? Was there an off season moment, a practice, maybe a, an NFL game where you're like, "Yo, I'm I'm a starter in the NFL and and I belong and I'm a pretty damn good one." Uh, I don't really, uh, I don't know. I don't really have that kind of mindset. I, I, I got to go out there every day, every snap and, and try to prove myself, uh, to my, to myself as, as well to, uh, my teammates and the, the organization. I like that. Humble, yeah. man. You can't go wrong with that at all. Me and Mo's always talk about that on the <laughs> podcast. We like people that are humble and they yes, just go out there and do their work. So yeah, I appreciate that. Now, speaking of a little bit of that humility, man, we know that, you know, your start to the NFL career, man, was very humbling in terms of going from practice squad with the Houston Texans to coming over here to Pittsburgh and being on the practice squad as well. So just talk about, man, how difficult of a process that was for you, you know, dealing with being on the practice squad, changing organizations and things like that. Yeah. I mean, um, you know, my first year in Houston, I was, like you said, I was put on the practice squad and, um, you know, that was, that was cool. That was uh, a good learning experience. Got me time to, you know, kind of hone in you know, on, on, uh, things I needed to work on and, and kind of get used to the, the speed and the size of everybody in the NFL. Um, but then I got cut from there and I kind of, kind of thought maybe my career might've been over, um, you know, and, and then uh, a couple of days later I got a call from the Steelers and they wanted to bring me in and, and uh, suit, or not suit me up, but, you know, uh, put me on the practice right. squad. And I just saw it as another opportunity of something I needed to, uh, to keep on improving with and, and uh, prove that I can play. I like that, man. Do you remember what that conversation was like with the Steelers? I don't know if it was Tomlin or who it was within the organization, what they said whenever they brought you onto the practice squad initially. Like, what was their vision for you? What was their plan? Where did they see you at within the Steelers organization, maybe in two or three years? What was their kind of whole plan for you? Um, you know, they didn't really, I mean, they, they said they wanted to bring me in and, and uh, have me uh, suit up, or not suit up, but, you know, um, help them out. Uh, I think we were playing the Patriots in week one. So, um, yeah, you know, they just asked if I was ready to help them beat the Patriots. And, and of course, I was willing and, and, and wanting to, uh, you know, help them wherever they needed me to be, uh, needed me to be. I like that. And I will say this too, man, seeing you early on like that, man, you did move around as well, man. And, that was one of the things that we valued. I think about well, you, uh, Chris Hubbard's another guy, man. Guys that really yeah. cut their two cut their teeth on practice squad under Munchak, and then seeing you know how those hard times really helped you in terms of where you are now, man. I always admire that about you guys. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Um, just not only me, but seeing you know, like you said, Hubbard and um, and even Al, like guys mm -hmm. that just come up from the practice squad and and uh, you know make a name for themselves. Absolutely. What well, they call it was Munch's Millionaires. <laughs> I think that was the thing. <laughs> I like that. Now was there <laughs> now was there ever a time I know you came from D two school, Bloomsburg. Now I have a kind of a little story with one of my friends who used to play with the Steelers back in the eighties 
who he came out of UConn, and he ended up going undrafted as well. But his college coach at the time said, hey, listen, don't even go out for the NFL. Just give up. I don't want you to get hurt or anything. Um, but he, like I said, went undrafted and had a five-year career with the Steelers. Now, was there any time or any people throughout your life that told you, like, hey, man, it might just be better for you to, to give up on this dream? And uh, I guess what was your mindset? Did you have any doubts at any point throughout this? Uh, you know, I, I, that was always in the back of my mind was like, I don't know, coming out of a small school, nobody's really ever heard of Bloomsburg. Um, so, I mean, like, what are my chances? But I've been really blessed and, and um, fortunate to have a, a very strong supporting uh, cast with my family members and, and my wife and uh, even my coaches at, at Bloomsburg. They were uh, very supportive. And, um, you know, my O-line coach, uh, I guess it was after my junior year, was like, hey, you know, scouts are, are starting to ask about you. Um, so just keep working hard and doing what you're doing. And uh, hopefully good things come from it. And shoot, they definitely have thus far, man. <laughs> you got to keep that thing rolling, baby. Keep it rolling. That's good. A little bit of support. <laughs> hey, so talk to me a little bit about, man, having seven back, man. Big Ben back this year under center. Man, what has that been like for you? What has it been like for the offense as a whole? Um, I think it's definitely – um it's definitely something that, you know, we see his drive and motivation and it definitely wants us to, you know, put forth our best, best effort and, uh, you know, just do, do everything right. Even the little things and, and, you know, just, uh, we all need to want to come together and, 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 uh, play our best football. I like it, man. And shoot so far. So good, man. Sitting at two and no, and yeah, we, we love what we're seeing from you guys, man. So definitely keep that thing rolling. Now this, uh, this year, if I'm correct now, this is a contract year for you, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, so talk to me a little bit about man, just how you've been handling that whole process. You know, just the thought of this could be your last season here in Pittsburgh, contracts and stuff like that, man. What's, what's been your whole thought process through this whole situation? Um, yeah, I haven't really been paying attention much to that. Um, you know, I just got to go out there every week and and play my hardest, and um, you know, whatever happens at the end of the season uh, happens. Hopefully, I stay in Pittsburgh. But, um, but yeah, I'm just I can't. I, I wasn't trying to focus on any of that, and and. Like I said, just uh, put put forth my best effort. I like it. It's a good mindset, man. <laughs> Focus on the things you can control, baby. Now, exactly. Matt, I've I've heard your your self proclaimed self proclaimed just quiet dude. You, we've heard through this interview, <laughs> you're humble, work hard. But I noticed you got the two sleeves of tattoo. So do you have do you have a wild side to you here? I Let's noticed. Go. I noticed on Let's the one go. arm, the one arm you have like an octopus. Is it a kraken? <laughs> Also yeah. have like a compass slash like navigation marker. There so we go. <laughs> what's the what's the inspiration there? Um, so the my the 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 cracking that you're talking about. Um, you know, I, I like the being at the beach and everything. Like my uh, my grandma has a, a house in Wildwood, New Jersey. Um, so I've always kind of grown up around the beach and, and being at the beach. So uh, it was kind of just paying homage to that. And then also my uh, my grandfather who. Uh, um, kind of kept me into sports and, and uh, I grew up with him, you know, he, he taught me everything I know pretty much. Um, you know, me and him just, uh, you know, he, he loved the beach too. So, I mean, it was kind of like a, like a, a piece for him. And I, there's a, actually like a, a hidden meeting in the skull that I have with my forearm. Ooh. It has a missing tooth. It has a missing tooth. And uh, growing up, whenever we had a loose tooth, he'd be like, oh, yeah, let me see your tooth real quick. And he'd pull it out before we even knew it was happening. Oh. So <laughs> just a little shout out to him. <laughs> like that that's dope <laughs> now before we let you go man we got to ask this week so we asked everybody that comes on to talk about their welcome to the nfl moment that moment where you're like oh yeah I i'm here whether it was good or bad we just want you to hear you know share your story about that all right well uh so first welcome to the nfl moment i was uh it's probably the first or second day of camp uh full pads and uh one of my first snaps, I was lined up against JJ Watt, and he just completely, completely just dogged me. <laughs> it was not a good look; did not feel good. But uh, yeah, that was probably that was probably my, my uh, welcome to the NFL moment right there. I like it, man. Hey, and if that's the guy that welcomed you to the NFL, you got it good because you know he's done that to a lot of people, man. So <laughs> hey, it's it's a good, it's all love, baby. But, Matt, right. man, we definitely appreciate you, man. We had a blast, you know, having you hop on the podcast with us. The listeners enjoyed it. And, yeah, man, just wish you nothing but the best the rest of this season, man. Stay healthy and keep being great, man. Awesome. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt, man. Thanks. All right. Peace.